All right, so next what we're going to do is we're going to talk a little bit about the why the restaurant list looks the way it does. So previously we talked about kind of how the overall main activity screen is arranged. But now I actually want to dig in a little bit and we're going to talk about exactly what's in the list and why. Um, and this, this introduces this topic called data binding. And data binding is pretty complicated. Um, and so I'm not really going to go into detail. There is no magic here, right? This is all done by code. But essentially, here's the high level overview. We have a list of items and we're using a library to render that list into this part of the screen. And this is all configured in main activity. So this code right here essentially tells this library um, a couple of things. It tells it this adapter to use, which allows it to take a restaurant and convert it into the, a little bit of what's shown on the screen. And then it tells it where the list should go. Okay. Now, if you think about it, let's say I give you a list of items and we were building an Android UI together and I said, display the list on the screen. What are some questions that you might have about how to do that, that we would need to answer? So one question is, what order should they appear? That is configured by that sort by name comparator that you worked on before. And that's why when you finished that and got it to work, you also noticed that now the list of restaurants in the UI is sorted. So that's awesome. Okay, great. Um, the other thing I would probably need to know is what should the each item look like? right? Like what should I show you? I have this, I have a Java object here. How do I convert it to something that you can see on the screen? And then the third question might be what happens if somebody clicks on it? So those two questions are connected to what's called this a layout fragment. So if I go back to my layout directory, I'm going to open up item restaurant.xml uh, and I'm going to, I'm looking at the code view here. So you might have to switch over to that. Um, and this is what's called a layout fragment. And it's also used by this data binding library. And the idea here is that this is what converts a restaurant, an instance of restaurant to a little bit of the UI. It essentially prints it, you can think of, to the screen, except now this is more complicated because I've got a UI and there's a lot of other variables like uh, to, to, to control for, right? Um, and so let's talk a little bit about how that happens. So the first thing I wanna do is sort of convince you that this is what's happening. So Frequently when you're working with UI, it can be helpful to make like a small change to something to see if you can get something to change so that you know you're kind of messing around in the right spot. So let's try changing the text size. I'm going to change that to something smaller, I think, I'm not even sure what that means, uh, and I'll run the app again. So what I'm expecting to happen is I'm expecting that the text in the items in my list should be smaller when the app restarts because I've changed this attribute. So let's see if that's actually the case. And sure enough, it is. Uh, okay, cool. Actually, it looks a little nicer that way. Um, but let's let's put it back. The, the size of the text actually doesn't matter. So now the question is, what's on the screen, right? What's on the screen is the name of the restaurant, and that's connected to this expression right here. Now, this is something that we're going to have to fix uh, as part of this particular test. And uh, you know. There is information, so for example, there's a whole, uh, the, 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 like what you put inside of here, there's this whole expression language um, that you can use to combine things together and stuff like that. But essentially you can think of this as taking the instance of restaurant that is rendering this particular part of the list and getting its name property. So this essentially calls get name, right? You can think of that doing that. Now. Uh, if I want to start experimenting in here, one of the first things I need to do is replace the single, the double quotes with single quotes. And now what I can do inside this is do things like this. I can combine, and I should use plus here. I should just, no, I should use plus. I can combine it with the string, for example. Um, so let's run the app again, and let's see what happens, right? So now what I'm expecting is that uh, the font size should go back to what it was, but for each restaurant in the list, I should see the restaurant name and then hello appended to the end of it. Um, and you know, you can, uh, the, you can look at, and, and indeed that's what's happening. Okay. And so, you know, again, I, I don't want to dwell on the data binding aspect of, of this particular project, because this is a place where we're showing you best practices, but there is a, a fair degree of subtlety here. Um, and, and, but we will talk more about this, right? And we'll come back and this is code that we'll revisit again. For this particular uh, checkpoint, what we need to do is just make a small change to get the values that are displayed on the screen to look a little bit different. 
and, and we'll come back and we'll talk a little bit about how to do that uh, in the next video. But I just wanted to introduce you to this idea of kind of what's happening here. Like why does the list look the way it does, right? Uh, the other thing in here that you'll see is that there's also um, handling here for what happens when somebody clicks on an item in this list. And that's something that we may also handle in the future as well. Right. right now, there's nothing happening here, um, but it may be that in the future we're going to use this to respond some way, like maybe open a new activity or something like that. So, so we'll figure out how to do that. All right, so I'm going to put this back uh, to the way I found it. Um, but, you know, now with some better understanding of, you know, what... And, and this, you know, I, I promised before, no magic. Maybe this feels a little bit like magic, but it really isn't. What it is is it's sort of a, a, an advanced pattern for how to render things on the screen that we're using as part of the app, going into all the details about how it works would, wouldn't be worth our time, but you do need to understand a little bit about how it works in order to, to, to make some changes that you need to make. And to be honest, that's common, right? When you start working on bigger software projects, there's times when, you know, you almost it's almost like being a ninja, right? Like you have to kind of come in, make a small set of changes and get out. And the less you understand about how everything works, sometimes the better, right? You know, like your, your, your boss might ask you, make this small change to this piece of code. And if you come back a week later and you're like, well, I was busy reading the entire code base to figure out how it all worked together. They're probably gonna be like, no, it's just like a one line change. Just make the change. and. And, and close that ticket and we can move on, right? Um, okay, so let me run this again, make sure it's, it's looking the way I expect. Um, and then we'll come back right here uh, for our next video where we talk about kind of exactly what, what needs to happen here, right? And what this piece of, piece of code should, should do in order to pass the next test case.